the DJI Osmo Plus or the GoPro Hero 4 Black. Which one's best for vlogging? Now, I'm not gonna be doing a video quality comparison in this video. There are already plenty of videos out there that show off the quality of both these cameras. I just wanna talk about how both of these actually are to use and vlog with when you're out and about. I'm comparing a DJI Osmo Plus with the cold shoe bracket and a Hero 4 Black on a generic pistol grip with a tripod to cold shoe adapter on the base. First up, let's talk sound options. The Osmo has a standard 3.5 mil jack, which is incredibly handy. I use a Rode VideoMic Pro as my go-to vlogging microphone, and this plugs straight into the camera at the base of the stabilization unit. The GoPro, on the other hand, has no mic jack at all. Now, you can buy an adapter to use one, but these aren't cheap. Unsurprisingly, the official adapter is pretty expensive for a cable and the cheap alternatives are always reviewed as being inconsistent and I just can't take the risk on something that may suddenly stop working when I need it. So official it is, which does add a little bit of cost. As for built-in sound, they're both pretty similar, probably with a slight edge to the Osmo, but to be honest, I always use an external microphone whenever possible, so this just doesn't really come into the equation for me. Advantage Osmo here, standard connection built-in. Plug your preferred mic directly into the handle and you're all good. Next up, let's talk field of view. The Osmo has a 20 mm equivalent lens, so it's fairly wide, but the GoPro has a wider field of view at 17.2 millimeters. Now, occasionally I'll use the GoPro with the medium FOV set, which gives it a slightly narrower 21.9. So if you do this, like me, technically the Osmo is wider. Otherwise, if you're using wide FOV, the GoPro will be wider and you'll get more in shot. One thing I have noticed is that the way I hold the Osmo stick with my hand on the recording buttons and camera joystick, means I'm holding it quite a bit further up the grip and closer to me than with the GoPro pistol grip, with the way I'm holding it being slightly further away, which kind of evens out the differences in field of view for me just a little. Edge here for me is with the GoPro. Even with a medium FOV, I slightly prefer the extra distance that the grip gives me. This point is really gonna depend how long your arms are though, and whether you vlog yourself more than your surroundings, and whether you really need that extra wide angle. Personally, I really appreciate it. Speaking of the grip, it's time to talk form factor. They both look a bit ridiculous, I'm willing to admit that. It definitely makes me feel a bit self-conscious using either of these in public, but in my opinion, the GoPro is just far more convenient and far less what are you holding than the Osmo is. It's just a little bit more subtle. I bought a mic holder for the Osmo so that I could mount the video mic on the arm that holds the phone, and it's fairly quick to attach and detach, which is great. It's off to one side though, which is a bit annoying, just as it makes it a bit heavier on this edge. With a lighter, smaller mic, this would be less of a consideration, but I really like the sound from the mic that I usually use, which is the Video Mic Pro, so it's kind of a shame that that's positioned where it is. I'm showing it here with just the regular video mic as I'm using the Pro to film this video right now, so this does make it a little bit larger than it is when I use it with the Video Mic Pro, but it's a pretty good rough estimation of the size and weight, and it's just a bit, bit left heavy. The big problem with the Osmo, however, is that the camera is flopping about all over the place when it's off. Even when you lock as many of the axes as possible, I just don't feel comfortable just dropping it in the top of a bag. This is probably a personal thing, and it comes with a nice protective case that I do keep it in, and I definitely could be using that, but I just don't like unpacking and repacking it all the time. With the GoPro, on the other hand, the mic slides out fairly easily, and I can just drop it in the top of a bag. I do have a separate lens cover that goes on the top here, just so that it protects the lens. And where there are no moving parts, it just feels a lot more tough and a bit more resilient to being treated kind of a little bit rough. It's also a much nicer place to have the mic mounted, as at the bottom in the center, it doesn't have the extra weight on one side like the Osmo does. It's very well balanced right in the center column. Definite advantage GoPro here. It's smaller, more compact, and is much less of a hassle to get out and set up. Speed is definitely a factor when you're vlogging, and while both devices connect to an app that lets you see what the camera sees and modify any sort of settings on the go, I really feel that this is only necessary on the Osmo. Throughout the entire time we were in Florida vlogging with the GoPro, it was quite rare that I missed my framing. I'd usually end up with a bit too much in frame, which I can crop down very easily. With the Osmo and no phone, I find myself missing my framing all the time. It's a narrower lens and it's less easy to guess what it sees and a bit more difficult to point it at what you want. Where it's stabilized, it tends to wander off when it senses movement, as by trying to kill the movement of your hand, it, it's no longer pointing straight at you. Whereas with the GoPro, you can just point it at yourself the whole time. Manually compensating for your own movement 
and still keeping your framing is just much easier on the GoPro. And if you do lose framing, it's quicker and more precise to rotate the camera on a stick than it is to try and drive the camera back to your face with the, the little joystick on the back of the Osmo or trying to reposition the stick where it's gonna fight you the whole time. If you're using the phone with the Osmo, the connection time takes a little bit longer when I've used it than the GoPro does. It has a longer boot time for the device itself, only just, and then your phone has to find the Wi-Fi network and connect. Whereas the GoPro turns on very quickly. So even when you connect over the Wi-Fi, it takes less time overall, which is incredibly handy. The GoPro is also much more usable without the phone and is ready to film almost straight away, which can sometimes be just so crucial when something unexpected happens and you need to film instantly. The Osmo does have a sleep mode where it maintains a connection with the phone and can be woken up with a tap on a screen. This does drain the battery when you're using it, however, and it's still not as fast as the GoPro, and I don't think it's really fast enough for me to use over the GoPro. In terms of how quick you can be ready to film, the GoPro is an easy winner for me, all day, every day. Power on, no app connection, just point it at yourself and film. It's so much easier to film yourself with, and how quickly and efficiently can I film this segment is a big concern when you're vlogging and also trying to enjoy your day out. Next up, battery life, a very big factor when it comes to vlogging cameras. Both cameras offer interchangeable batteries, so you can swap out your battery as soon as it's sort of drained, which is great because you can carry spares with you and be prepared. The Osmo has an estimated life of about 70 minutes, but can be anywhere between 40 and 80, depending on whether you use sleep mode, Wi-Fi, what your picture settings, whether you're filming 4K, etc. The GoPro Hero 4 has an estimated battery life of 90 minutes with the Wi-Fi off and recording at 1080p, or an estimated 75 minutes with the Wi-Fi on and connected to the app. All that aside though, the big difference maker for me is the ability to charge the camera over USB. The GoPro can be charged via a mini USB cable plugged directly into the side and then straight into a portable phone charger, which is perfect if you're trying to vlog. When we last went to Disney, I took three batteries with me and charged them each night. This was fine, but next time I'll just be bringing a portable charger. Every time I put the camera in my bag, I can make sure that it's plugged in and I can just top up the power. There isn't really a great option to do this for the Osmo and it really does make the GoPro far easier to keep charged. Finally, let's talk about the big reason to get the Osmo in the first place, stabilization. Does it make a huge difference? Eh, kind of. This is actually a difficult one for me to answer as, and I don't mean to brag, but I have quite steady hands. Combined with the pistol grip for the GoPro, this means that my footage tends not to be that bad. It's fairly bouncy, as in up and down movement, but the Osmo is quite limited in stabilizing in that direction anyway, unless you buy an additional stabilization arm, which just makes the whole thing even bigger and even more ridiculous, and more expensive. If you have a big issue with holding cameras steady, I can definitely see that the stabilization would be quite valuable and have much more of a pronounced effect, but most people, when they're using a good grip and really trying to concentrate on holding their hands steady, they're kind of fine enough and it's not really a huge issue. When I'm looking back at my test day footage, I can definitely see that the footage looks smoother, but when you're filming yourself and moving around, it looks kind of weird and a little off-putting. We had a couple of comments on our stabilized footage saying, not sure why, but this just looks a little weird to me. And it's quite awkward, especially when it turns on its own and is really difficult to compensate for. So the stabilization is actually having a bit of a negative effect in those situations. Now, filming others, I think that's where this would really shine. If I was out and about with Sarah and we were filming a video that wasn't a vlog outside, then this would be a great way to get smooth, steady cam style camera work that would really look great. Filming myself though, as I tend to do in vlogs, I don't get as much of a benefit of it as I'd like. This was really a bit disappointing as I had all these lovely ideas of buttery smooth vlogs and it just hasn't really worked out like that for me. Overall, it's hard to beat the GoPro, it really is. The Osmo has some amazing potential and I'm really excited to own one because of that one day when it'll be perfect for something I'm trying to do and I'll have it there ready to use, but it's not gonna be my primary vlogging camera anytime soon. One thing I'll definitely say though, if you're filming vlogs in that more sort of cinematic style, this would be a fantastic camera for that. Filming groups of your friends, scenery, moving shots while walking around lends itself really nicely to that kind of filmmaking. But if you film in the more sort of candid style that we tend to use, I personally can't recommend it over the GoPro. So, I love the camera. It does a great job doing what it does. It's just not quite what I need. I'm glad I have it and I'll really appreciate having it one day, but right now I'll be sticking with the GoPro as my big vlogging camera. Hopefully that was a useful comparison and you know a bit more about what each camera was like to film with. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank you for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and why not subscribe to our channel? You can also check out one of our other videos that should be on screen right about now.
One thing I have noticed is that the way I hold the Osmo stick with my hand quite far up the shaft, not gonna use that word because that's not a good word to use on the internet.